Documents say Welch read online that the Comet restaurant was harboring child sex slaves and he was armed to help rescue them. He surrendered peacefully when he found no evidence that underage children were being harbored in the restaurant. Pizza Gay, roll four, scene one, take 11. may be over, but the hysteria surrounding it is not. The latest example, on Sunday, police say a 35-year-old man walked into a Washington pizza restaurant called Comet Ping Pong with a gun. Police allege Edgar Welch fired one shot into the ground. He told police he traveled from North Carolina to investigate claims that the restaurant was really a front for a child sex ring connected to Democratic presidential nominee Hillary Clinton and her chief of staff, John Podesta. The unproven allegations of a secret sex ring organized by Clinton and Podesta have been circulating since before the U.S. election. The connection to the pizza restaurant is rooted in the Podesta emails published by WikiLeaks. The Podesta emails show coordination between the restaurant and campaign for a fundraiser. Users on the website Reddit using the hashtag Pizzagate in recent weeks exploded with allegations the restaurant was fronting something more nefarious. Reddit shut down the thread. Promoting false and reckless conspiracy theories do come with consequences. And I hope that those that are involved with fanning these flames will take a moment to contemplate what happened here today. What? It seems to be such ridiculous kind of uh, story can seem to have any kind of hold on people and bring people to potential violence is really shocking. That's why neighbors are now rallying around the business in an effort to try and insulate from the partisan passions and conspiracies increasingly pervasive in a post-election United States. Pizza game, roll three, scene two, take four. Newsflash, this isn't news. <laughs> this is entertainment. If you want news, go to CBS's John Dickerson or maybe the Wall Street Journal. But don't go to some anonymous guy on social media. Because a lot of the news on social media is a lie. There's so much fake news out there. The fake news is having such an influence on our lives that today, and this is true, Pope Francis said, media that focus on scandals and spread fake news to smear politicians risk becoming like people who have a morbid fascination with excrement. <laughs> and if the Pope's talking poop, you know we're in deep doo-doo. The spectacle presents itself simultaneously as society itself, as a part of society, and as a means of unification. 
As a part of society, it is the focal point of all vision and all consciousness. But due to the very fact that this sector is separate, it is in reality the domain of delusion and false consciousness. FBI agents committing murder suicide uh, over uh, connections to Hillary Clinton. Again, right. completely false. General Flynn, during the campaign, um, accused Hillary Clinton of being involved in sex crimes against children. Um, You're talking about a tweet? Yeah, tweet? he wrote this. It wasn't a, it wasn't a retweet. Or he, fake he, news. He wrote a tweet. Really, right? Is that the fake news story? I mean, he, he accused, story. during the campaign, late in the campaign, said that Hillary Clinton was involved in sex crimes with children. But I think the source of that was a fake news report. Right, but he tweeted it, right? He, he broadcast this. I, I haven't seen his Twitter feed, but I trust you. Okay. Um, he did. You can ask him. He did. Um, as national security advisor, it will be his judgment that the president turns to in times of national security crises, no matter what they are. His judgment is such that he did publicly accuse Hillary Clinton of being a child rapist. Oh. Is, no. Why? why no. He did. He That's did. a little hyperbolic. I, well, sex crimes against some, children, we can... I, I don't uh, like we can, fake news retweets myself. It wasn't a retweet. It, He's a, he said that everybody needed to check out this news, that Hillary Clinton was involved with sex crimes with children. Rachel, you're complaining that you think. You're saying that you're, you're telling your audience, frankly, one negative thing about him, and we're not looking at his overall credentials and his years in the national security community, his tours of duty. I've talked to him about those directly. His tours of duty, the three goals he has for the country as national security now you would think people would be laughing like crazy shaking their heads but if you migrate that crazy story to Facebook posts, to news outlets, there are people who will believe that, including this very unfortunate young man in North Carolina who believed it. It was meant to be believed to influence voting. Even I have to say I don't believe it was meant to be believed to influence somebody to pick up an AR-15 and drive from North Carolina to Washington to liberate the imaginary children from the imaginary basement of the pizza parlor. There are so many other examples that were the same pattern from stealing to giving to WikiLeaks to propagating to weaponizing into somebody's you know, Google chain into somebody's Facebook post. And I think it's one of the most serious challenges we face going forward in politics, not just at the presidential level, but up and down, because if we don't get a handle on information that is not just controversial, protected by the First Amendment, but aimed at spreading lies to the extent that they can cause behavior like we saw in this terrible instance, it will not stop. And I'm glad that the Congress and others are looking at Facebook and Twitter and Google because they are the vehicles, the one of the very first um, vehicles to deliver this kind of information to people. Um, you were describing some uh, incredible information about the about the alt right and their various uh, methodologies of utilizing strategies of attention and the internet. Maybe you could talk a little bit about that now. Right. Um, well, I don't think it's uh, specific to the alt right, um, but they have been somebody or a group that has been able to capitalize on some sort of innate tendencies uh, in the internet. Which, like you said earlier, yeah, it's the attention economy makes uh, basically it, it shapes evolutionarily basically everything that happens. And as long as there is this advertising or free content with advertisement as the revenue, I think there's no way to change this. This is sort of like the inevitable outcome of that is that 
our phones and our devices and everything just uh, have become these capture devices and they're they're intentionally addictive and you can see this in all sorts of products um, for instance the algorithm on YouTube it's like very much designed to sort of like take you down the rabbit hole so you start with some sort of legitimate political video but the suggested videos right away are you know conspiracy theories or something like that and it's really like I think there is something designed in these sort of these algorithms to well, keep your attention and also to they just have this inadvertent effect of radicalizing you and reinforcing this information. Someone mentioned this concept called a post-truth society in which it's possible to assert things that have no factual basis. Uh, people will criticize it, you know, fact checkers, and it makes no difference whatsoever that people will keep asserting it and then other, you know, large numbers of people will keep believing it even, even if it's not true. You know, it's interesting because it's subterranean uh, in large part. You know, it shows up in the Facebook news feed, but you don't see it because it's not, if, if anything, it's being debunked in the mainstream media. So in those sources of news, uh, it's, you, you, you don't touch and feel it as much as maybe you'd imagine. But it's sinister, and it's a kind of vile stream that's running under the ground. And Trump peddles it. His people pedal it, Bannon pedals it, Breitbart pedals it. He still uh, calls Alex Jones and talks to him and, you know, the uh, info wars. Info wars. Conspiracy uh, theories. Conspiracy theories. Sandy Hook didn't happen. It was all made up to try to take your guns away. All that stuff exists. You don't see it. You don't feel it if you're largely living in reality and in a mainstream media world. It's... Uh, undermining our democracy, and I think that the companies themselves, they've taken some steps. They have a lot of responsibility. Companies like Facebook. Or companies like Facebook, Google, etc. Right. Uh, to do what they can uh, to uh, essentially not enhance this, not uh, to create uh, uh, a, uh, you know, ecosystem where the fake news is, is uh, it rose up. Um, somebody did it, I think BuzzFeed did it. Yeah. They looked at uh, Facebook traffic of the 20 top political stories in the mainstream media and the 20 top fake news stories right. that were completely debunked and found that the likes and shares of the fake news exceeded by 20% the, the mainstream news. Fake stimuli, acting in the attention economy, from things like memes and clickbait, have given rise to fake memories. Fake memories have organized attention facilities in such a way that in the brain, the brain networks are overpowered by the more attention-grabbing fake news, the repetition, the repetition, the, the repetition. repetition, physically transforming neural networks. We remember shocking or negative feelings sevenfold more readily than we do positive or benign moments. Roll three, scene four, take ten. John Podesta, the uh, chief of staff for Hillary Clinton. Uh, then we've got his brother. Tony Podesta, who uh, was the one that invited uh, John to the spirit dinner. Do you remember John Podesta, Hillary Clinton's campaign chairman? His emails were leaked by WikiLeaks. John Podesta and his brother Tony Podesta emailed back and forth several times throughout these leaked emails, one of them most famously being about the spirit cooking dinner. Someone sent me a link to Washington Life magazine that goes behind the scenes over at Tony Podesta's house. And he has some very interesting artwork. Looks like they're having a house party. Here's Tony Podesta in the middle. Here's the whole gang. Here's everybody who was invited. And wait, is that Marina in the background? Marina, are you cooking on the TV, girl? Of course he's here at Tony Podesta's house. Abramovic is considered the grandmother of performance art. 
A spirit cooking dinner is an occult ritual started by Abramovic that derives from the religion Thelema and gory ceremony that mix blood, breast milk, urine, and sperm together and use the mixture to paint messages on the walls. Abramovic allegedly uses pig's blood as a medium to connect the spirit world with the material world. In Thelema, spirit... Does that look like an age-appropriate artist for them to be commissioning? Does that even look like an artist to you? Is that just like a, a fucked up person who belongs in an insane asylum drawing really sick stuff? Is that art? Let me explain to you guys what you're looking at because I was an art history minor in college and I don't even consider this to be art. I think it's uh, you know just a piece of evidence basically. So yeah, I don't consider this to be art. I was an art history minor in college. Art history minor. Art history. Art 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 history. The the. Uh, so this to me is not artwork. These are sick people. Oh, oh, oh. What a terrible ordeal this must have been for you. It has been. When this man walked into your restaurant with this gun, firing multiple shots, no one was injured. You weren't there that day, right? I was what? there earlier that day. You knew things were reaching a fever pitch, but did you ever foresee that? What happens is this person was inspired to drive across four state lines with an assault rifle and enter a family-friendly restaurant at 3 o'clock in the afternoon on a Sunday. So you can imagine the fear right. that must have been felt by these people, and this is real consequences. And to be accused of being a pedophile because you have emails that talk about pizza when you run a pizza parlor. I mean, they're gonna be emails, like, well, the word pizza seems out of place. It's, I mean, it's really gone down the rabbit hole. But again, the DC police are saying this is fake. Thank fake. you. It's true. Yes, it's been just, it's like being terrorized. It's been over a month of daily death threats to me, hundreds of phone calls to the restaurant, asking for all kinds of wild things like ordering a cheese pizza, something that we just do. We're a pizza place. Right. Hey, hey, hey. I'm here to warn people. You keep telling me to shut up, 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 up. This isn't a game, okay? Our government in the U.S. is building FEMA camps. We have an NDAA where they disappear people You have now. this arrest for public Life safety. You are the worst it, person I've ever interviewed. No, no, it's basically <laughs> a lot of disappearing. David, thank Take you for being with us. It's gone, gone uh, half Liberty past 11. You're watching the Liberty Sunday politics. Rising. We have an idiot Freedom in the program today. Does that even look like an artist to you? Is that just like a, a fucked up person? Is that hey, listen, I'm like here to warn people. You keep telling me to shut up. Like a, a this isn't a game. This is Podesta. Uh, John Podesta. Uh, this isn't a game. I'm here to warn people. You keep telling me to shut up. This isn't a game. You're talking about a tweet. Yeah. You're talking about a tweet. Yeah. Truth isn't true. 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 Truth isn't true.